Hi, I'm Molly here at Mill City Museum where we're highlighting women in Minneapolis labor history. As the daughter of a politically active carpenter, Eva Valesh was exposed to labor issues early on. Building on her experience in a print shop and topographer's union, Eva became an investigative journalist for the St. Paul Globe. Writing as Eva Gay, she worked undercover to investigate and explore women's working conditions. This launched her career as a labor journalist, public speaker, and newspaper editor. Now let's hear what she has to say. My article entitled, Mong Girls Who Toil, appeared in March of 1888. Here's what I wrote. When I first entered this establishment, I found myself breathing an atmosphere whose distinguishing characteristics were the smell of new cloth, dust, heat, and sewer gas. It was stifling. There was a row of large windows along two sides of the room. I noticed that several of the girls had bandaged heads and complained of headache. Why don't you open the windows and get some fresh air, I asked. We can't stand to have the windows open in this weather, a girl told me. We get such colds and rheumatism from the draft. We get used to the air after a while, a German girl told me. It isn't very bad now, but most every day the water isn't running in the toilets for an hour or so. Of course, the girls use them anyway. The smell is awful then. Some of the girls get sick almost every day. Ten hours a day or more these girls worked in such conditions. But if the air was bad, the wages were even worse. The girls told me they are paid three and a half cents per shirt and can make 12 shirts a day. That's 42 cents a day. But don't forget, if a shirt is flawed and needs to be ripped out, then a girl doesn't get paid for it. One girl told me she only made $1.75 last week. I asked why they don't complain about the conditions. What's the use, said a girl. If we don't want to put up with the way we're treated, we're told we can leave. They can find plenty of girls glad to work for any wages. Less than one month after I wrote about the deplorable conditions and wage cutting practices of this establishment, 300 female employees went on strike. What did they ask for? Only that they be paid what their services are worth and that they not be ogled and insulted while they worked. I was immediately blamed for instigating the strike. Well, the girls held out and by June, the factory closed their doors bankrupt and disgraced. Since that time, the cause of labor has been on the rise. Meanwhile, I knew then and there I'd found my calling to be a voice for working men and women, especially women, everywhere. I began campaigning in earnest for the eight hour league on any street corner that would accommodate me. As a matter of fact, I became quite a popular speaker if I do say so myself. 